amigos, I'm Lauren DeSantis and this is Capital Cooking in Cabo. Join me as Capital Cooking travels to the beautiful Los Cabos, Mexico to experience the food and fun this unique destination has to offer. We'll discover Mexican culture and food while being surrounded by some of the most amazing and luxurious scenery in the world. Be sure to stay tuned to see what Cabo has to offer and to learn the secrets of cooking, eating, and drinking authentic Mexican at home. In this episode, we'll hit the essentials of Cabo. Margaritas, salsa, guacamole, fresh fish, Mexican culture, history, and street food. Plus, we'll do something I've always dreamed of, swimming with the dolphins. After flying all the way from DC to the Baja Peninsula, I needed a drink. Luckily, the bartenders at the Grand Solmar Hotel hooked me up. We're here at the Grand Solmar Hotel with Armando, and he is gonna show us how to mix up some amazing cocktails. We are gonna start with the Grand Solmar Margarita. What are we gonna do to start off? First, we have to put like a salty pepper with lime around the glass. Look so. at this margarita size. That's what I'm talking about. All right, I'll good. help you with that while yeah. you start you mixing have, up the... We got here like lime juice and then you yep. have to roll it. Yep. Yes. I can handle that. So what all goes into this margarita? In this one, we got like a cucumbers with all the skin. So that is going to make it green. Ooh. And then we added like mint, tequila, and then we're going to add some Grand Marnier. Yum. That sounds really refreshing. Oh. That's one of the best margaritas right here. First, we're gonna add two ounces of Grand Marnier. That looks good. If you don't have Grand Marnier, you can use like orange liqueur. Any triple sec. Uh, that's right. And then we're gonna add some Classe Azul Tequila. Ooh, one of my favorite I know ones. all about that. That's good tequila. Uh, that's the Reposado, the right? That's right. And then we're gonna, we already blended the cucumbers with fresh mint. Ooh. You can crush it too if you want it, but it's not gonna be the same flavor. The muddling? Yeah, but we blended already. Blended in so a So we're gonna add it right here. How much are you doing? You can add it like uh, three ounces of lime juice, two ounces of syrup, like sugar, sugar water. Yep, simple syrup. Yeah, that's right, and then we're gonna add it some ice. Okay, there you go. Okay, and then we're gonna add more ice right here in the cup. More, you want me to add? Yeah. That's gonna, party. Oh yeah, look at that. We're gonna put right here. Little right here. garnish. Yes. What is that? An apple with yeah. some little blueberries. With apple with like the skins of the orange, and then Ooh. we add some blueberry in it. That looks fancy. That's the way to do it. Now you can try it. Okay, you can try. Ooh, that's good. <laughs> that this, might be the best margarita I ever had. But cheers. Salud! Salud! <laughs> <laughs> For more signature margarita recipes from the Grand Solmar, visit CapitalCookingShow.com. The next day it was time to get off the resort and see the real Cabo. San Jose is just a short drive north and offers all the history, culture, and cuisine you'd expect from an old Mexican city. I met up with culinary ambassador Wacobo to show me around his city and to find all the hot spots to visit. Hola, I'm Lauren. Hi, Lauren. Nice to meet you. My nice name is meet Jacob. You. Welcome to San Jose del Cabo. We have City Hall right there at this town, town square. And we also have the church that was settled in 1730. So you have some history here to show you. Yeah, all a lot right? of history. And nowadays, the whole trend of Los Cabos has become, you know, one of the fastest growing cities in, in Mexico not only by its population, but also food-wise. Talking about food and the gastronomy in Cabo has really bloomed in the last uh, couple of years, three years, four, five years. And uh, we have chefs from all over the world coming to either establish a restaurant or work in a hotel with the, the resorts. And we find ourselves with um, surrounded by uh, great organic orchards. You know, they have all these plantations, organic, uh, uh, field greens and, and herbs and vegetables and tomatoes and all sorts of things that we use. 
And besides that, we have the Pacific Ocean on one side of the peninsula, the Sea of Cortez on the other one. So we are really well, you know, we are actually well spoiled with, yeah. with all this fresh produce and, yeah. and fresh seafood. And so we just do wonders with the food. So, Great. You know, so we'll show you around. Let's go. So this is the street Alvaro Obregón. And this is pretty much where everything starts, you know, related to the galleries. How many galleries are, All together, are in this art block? In this area, it's about 18 of them, and there's about uh, 10 restaurants. So again, it's a combination between coming into the galleries, take a glass of wine, and then just go for dinner, any of the, you know, the options like you have in the restaurant. <laughs> oh yeah, it is. We visited many of the galleries in San Jose, showcasing the wide variety of Mexican art. Under the hot sun, though, it wasn't long before I started getting thirsty. Polkovo knew a great boutique hotel called Casa Natalia that had a martini bar. Hola. Hi, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Welcome to Casa Natalia. This is Deck Bar, Martini Hi. Bar. Uh, may I offer something to drink? Yeah, thanks. Um, I'm thinking about going with something with mezcal because I've been drinking tequila all week and. I had my eye on this uh, mezcalina. Mezcalina, that's a very good drink. We do really good mezcal. This one right here with mezcal. Ooh, okay. And I made it this way. I'm going to show you how to make it. And okay? Thank you. All right, the first thing I had to do is to put a little sugar, brown sugar. Ooh, a little brown sugar. A little bit brown sugar. That's it. Some ginger, just a little bit of ginger. And a piece of uh, pineapple. Ginger and pineapple sounds like a good Yeah, pineapple. That's it. Muy bien. Then I mm. smash a little bit, just for to take a little bit juice out. Perfecto. That looks good. Muy bien. Yeah, we're doing really good. Then we put on the mixer, put some ice. Then we add the mezcal. This mezcal. one has kind of a slightly smoky flavor. <laughs> yes, it's a little bit smoky. This is mezcal, actually it's a little bit smooth. It's not the strongest one. And then we add a little pineapple juice. Just a little bit pineapple juice. That's it. And we have to do it this way. Okay, well, 17 times. And voila. Ooh, look at that. Perfect. This is a mezcalina drink. You can taste it. Finally, a tropical drink with some mezcal. Ooh, that's perfect. It's so Good. smooth and it yes. tastes like you're at the beach. It tastes a little different than tequila. That's it. I love the combination of the ginger and the pineapple. Cheers. Delicious drink? Check. But now I want it street food. In the main square, we found a tamale cart. I ordered one stuffed with cheese and poblano peppers. Me regala uno de queso con rajas. Mm -hmm. oh, that's a big tamale. Yeah. Wrapped in corn husk. There you go. Ooh, gracias. gracias. All right, for some real street food. This is a tamale with queso and poblano peppers. A little bit of salsa. Mmm. That's delicious. So good, I need another bite. Yum. <laughs> okay, so this is like street corn in a cup. We have some corn kernels with some mayonnaise and cheese. And a prepared sausage. Sauce. 
and a prepared sauce. What kind of sauce is that? Uh, chili with lemon and other condiments. That looks good. This is something I've definitely never had before. Yeah, you have to try it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> wow. This looks, um, this looks good. Mmm. <laughs> It's basically like eating street corn, but not having to get your teeth all messed up by biting into the corn. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> I was really digging San Jose for obvious reasons. And it turned out Wakoba wasn't just a great guide, but he was also a restaurateur. The last stop on his tour was his own La Penga to sample more upscale Mexican food in a beautiful setting. Yeah, we try to focus a lot of our menu mostly on seafood and the organic produce around here. Obviously, we also have poultry, beef, and all sorts of uh, other options, but 80% of our menu is based on fresh product, seafood, and organic produce from the region. What do we have here? Well, we have uh, starters. We have a fried calamari with a, with a chipotle mayo. Oh, that. Those are really good. good. When they're warm, they're just awesome. This calamari is a little bit different than our calamari back home with the chipotle mayo because, um, you know, it adds a little bit of chipotle pepper, which, you know, normally we don't find in our sauce. And, you know, it's just, you can tell it's so fresh and, you know, when we bite into it, it, you know, it's that perfect texture. Mm. And it's only a little bit of breading, which I like. That's a tiradito. It's a tuna. That's the name fresh of it? tuna with, yeah. Ooh. We don't call it sashimi or anything like that. It's a tiradito. It's more like a Latin American, mm. you know. What are the flavors in there? You have some, it's a very light citrus vinaigrette. That's avocado, fresh avocado. And a seaweed salad, try Ooh. the seaweed salad. It's just fantastic. So this tuna, you know, it's just so fresh. And the, sea, the seaweed salad is a little bit different than the stuff we've had at other restaurants. I mean, obviously in Cabo, you have a ton of fresh seafood since we're right near the ocean. But um, this one with a seafood salad, it's a little bit, uh, seaweed salad, it's a little bit of sweetness. And it really adds to the dish. Mm. Over here we have a mm. beef salpicon. Salpicon is just a preparation. It's all cold. It's already cooked and cold. It's like a oh, it's, like oh, it's a beef. Salad. Okay, it's beef. It's a, shredded like a beef. beef shredded beef salad. It's like plank steak. Yes. Oh, we use good. red onions, avocados, fresh tomatoes, cilantro. It's just fresh. All of this. Dishes um, are just, you know, nice from the area, and right now summertime is just fantastic. And this salad is really unique. I've never had anything like it. Shredded beef that. It's been cooked and then chilled. It's perfect because it's not. It doesn't weigh you down. It's not too heavy. Mmm. You got a zip on the on the Gazpacho? tomato gazpacho. So what's in here? That's just a little. Uh, that's drizzled with basil oil. Mmm. Some sweet peppers and there's celery. There's cucumber, a little garlic, and onions, Harlem tomatoes. It's just a mm. kind of a V8. In natural way. But this gazpacho, the basil oil on top is a really unique flavor that you don't always find in a gazpacho and it just has this perfect aftertaste because you taste the basil finish at the end. Thanks so much for taking us in here and giving us a tour and for these lovely dishes and um, I'm really excited that I've got to experience Cabo. Thank you. Thank you for coming and thanks for choosing Cabo when we hope to see everybody down here to enjoy our food, our hospitality, obviously look around the galleries and the art and the culture that we have here in San Jose and the amazing activities we have in nightlife in Cabo San Lucas. So come to Cabo. Next up, it was time for a little bit of adventure, swimming with the dolphins. Cabo Dolphins offers a great experience with expert trainers. Hi, I'm Lauren. Nice to meet Hi, you. Nice to meet you. I'm Ricardo. I'm so excited to swim with the dolphins. Can you tell me a little bit about what we're going to do? Sure, yes. Uh, well, right here we have 12 dolphins, and today we're going to be interactive with one of them. Okay, the name of your dolphin is going to be Ukalai. Uh, yes, Ukalai is a female dolphin. She's around seven years old, and she's pretty nice girl. Great, well, thanks. I can't wait, and uh, let's get in there and play. Excellent. Let's go. Let's try. Uka Light was super cute and playful. With Uka Light, we're going to make several things. 
She's going to kiss you, you're going to kiss her back, and you're going to dance with her. But she doesn't speak English, no <laughs> Spanish, French, Japanese, only body motion, hand signs, and noises. You are going to take a ride on the dolphin. You are going to hold the pectoral flippers like this, the other hand around the pin, and she's going to pull you, making a big circle in front of the, of the dolphin. I must admit, riding on the back of the dolphin is something that I never imagined I'd ever do. These amazing creatures are really worth experiencing for yourself. Next up, we hit one of the most exclusive resorts of Cabo, the one and only Pamia. Chef Larby is the executive chef at this stunning place, and he used to cook in DC. He opened up his outside kitchen to teach me some Cabo recipes. Welcome, we're gonna do some guacamole, salsa mexicana. Let's so get started. We're gonna start with the guacamole. Let's put the avocado in Give me a little hand, just scoop, scoop it. Scoop it out? It. Yeah. I love guacamole. It's a uh, nice uh, ripe avocado. It's a uh, nice uh, red onion, cilantro, lime, salt, pepper, mm. and I add a little. Uh, depend how spicy you like. You can do habanero. Ooh. It's very spicy. Jalapeno. So this is like nice simple recipe that people can make. Very at home. simple. Very you can make it in five minutes. So Ooh. if you if you That's want a good. spicy spicy, you use the seed. If not, you just scoop the seed, oh, yeah, yeah. take them out, and just like So you like thing. it spicy? Yeah. <laughs> you do? Too? Yeah, I like spicy. Yeah. So we're going to do a little cilantro. Okay. Yeah. You do a good Ooh, job, this yeah. looks good. Voilà. Looks delicious. Salt, pepper, and lime. I'm sure you have a lime. Not lemon, lime. <laughs> okay. But, yeah. <laughs> and the secret is to put drop of virgin olive oil. Just give it a Ooh. See? Oh, so that's the secret. Yeah, that's the <laughs> You find it. <laughs> it's on it's very that. easy, you see? Yeah. Take a slice, then I show you. Just makes your make sure. You like it like really it. smooth? Some, no, not too smooth. Some people, I mean, some people like it smooth, but it should be perfect. Nice and chunky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Try. Try if it's enough salt and pepper. Mm, you see something? It's good. Huh? It's really good. See how fast? Yummy. See how simple that is? Yeah. Make this guacamole at home. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna make the salsa mexicana now, or do you want to start? Yeah, let's going? do it. All right. So we're gonna dice some tomato. It's gonna be similar. It's gonna be tomato, red onion, cilantro, salt, pepper, and then lime. Nothing like fresh salsa in yeah. Mexico. That's looking good. When I was in the state, I was uh, a lot of time I go to the restaurant. They have salsa, salsas, and I. And all mostly was cooked. I didn't understand why oh, it's cooked. Oh yeah, yeah. It's better to fresh. And uh, a lot of it's restaurants serve it, yeah, serve it warm. Well, I get a lot of friends requesting me like, "What's your best salsa recipe?" So now I can share this one with them. Just yeah. you know, some tomatoes, some red yes. onions, some cilantro, a little pepper. Depending on how spicy you like it, mix it all together. And a little olive oil. And a little olive oil. See? A little trick. I always add olive oil to everything. Yeah. You try it. Yes. Yeah, just Looks delicious. It's nice and summery here. Yeah. Summery, refreshing yeah. on a hot day. Mmm. <laughs> That's good. The fresh produce really made these simple dishes shine. Try these recipes at home, and you'll never want to go back to buying stuff in the jars. The recipes for both of these can be found at capitalcookingshow.com. Absolutely. So when I saw that Larry uh, um, was preparing the, the most typical dishes in Mexico, the guacamole and the Mexican salsa, uh, I think the best pairing for this is, is mezcal. Uh, so for this afternoon, I have picked a, a great mezcal from the state of Oaxaca. <clears throat> this is a very fine and particular mezcal because it's produced by, by, uh, by an agave that is called tepextate, that it takes 35 years for the plant to be ready. So it takes really long time and a lot of effort to, to produce this, uh, this beautiful mezcal. Yeah. Have a little sip, the idea is to, to have a sip, keep it in your, in your mouth as long as you can and then swallow it and, and it will release all the uh, beautiful and fresh aromas that mezcal has. Oh, you, will, you will find a, a little smokier. bit of smokiness yeah, very smoky. in the aftertaste that is very characteristic of mezcal. No? Okay. It's an amazing pairing, you, you will see that. Che, what do you think? Did you like the, yeah. the mezcal? I like it. Mm. I like the... Mm. What do you think of the combination, the guacamole and the mezcal? 
I think you it, like it? it's it's nice. It pairs really well together. It, it highlights the the, the flavor the, of the, the dish. Too. Yes. Well, cheers and uh, chef. Chef. Hello. Nice to have you here. Chef Larby couldn't have taken us into his kitchen without showcasing Cabo's best culinary resource, fresh fish. All right, we are gonna make a tuna sashimi, and this piece of tuna was just caught yesterday right in Cabo. Look at that. 113 kilos, 226 pounds. It's beautiful. And uh, this is just part of it. So we're gonna, it's very easy recipe. 226 pounds, that's yeah. crazy. Two, 100, yeah, 226. I bet that was hard to reel in. Take two hours and 20 minutes. Can you, can you just wow. close it? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. So we're gonna put a little salt pepper. It's very easy Ooh. and very uh, salt. Can't get better than just fresh yeah. fish. Yeah. Everyone keeps telling me like Cabo, yeah, you know, you have your traditional Mexico, Mexican food, but Cabo is really known for the seafood. Yeah. Like, they yeah. have the best seafood here. Yeah, you cut it and you eat it. Ooh, right. look at that. Just kind of carve it right off of the... Look looks like meats. a piece of Angus Shave beef. It. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. I mean, how can you not like that? It's a very yeah. simple recipe. Just come to Cabo, yeah. catch a big piece of tuna. And I cook it for you. Yeah. And then you just, you know, <laughs> cut it and <Yeah. laughs> eat it. <laughs> so you can have it just like that. People who love tuna, they don't need much, you know, just eat it like with olive oil. Some people, yeah. they like... A little lemon. Lemon. Lemon, Ooh. so cook it a little bit. A little ceviche yeah. type of thing. Yeah, and you can put a little onion, dice onion. Ooh, yum. Dice onion, like that. Dice onion, you can put a little cilantro. A little cilantro. Voilà. And put a little, little spicy. A little spicy. People are afraid to eat raw stuff. With the spice, it goes away. Ooh, looks voilà. like capacho. Voila. Beautiful. Done. Done. Easy as one, two, three. You can get your hands on fresh off the boat tuna. There's no better way to enjoy it than this. The recipe's online, but you might have to come to Cabo to find a fish that tastes this good. All right, so now we are gonna do a pairing of this tuna with this um, convertible rosa. And uh, where's this wine made? It is made in Baja California, North Baja California in Ensenada. The 90% of the Mexican production of wines are from there. And the winery is Viñas de Tijuana. You have to yeah, try let's it. see try. how it pairs with this tuna. With the tuna. Mm. Mm. The wine, yeah. wine really yeah. complements yeah. the tuna because it's like the perfect um, amount of acid that goes with it, I think. Yeah. Like, I think that's really well. it goes very, yeah. very good. Very well yeah. with the vinegar. With the protein of the tuna yeah. and yeah, the salt for me is perfect. Yeah. Very good pairing. So come to Cabo, yeah. eat some tuna, try day. this rosé wine. Yeah. Salud. And the beautiful tuna. Salud. Yeah. What a perfect way to end a day in paradise. We've done a lot in this episode, but the adventure is just beginning. Join us next week when we ride camels, explore a world-class wine cellar, hit the spa, and discover the secrets of good tequila.